everybody, this is Houston Brown with Houston Brown Photography and uh, welcome to this gray, dreary, overcast day. Two days ago it was summertime here in Dallas and uh, we had some rain and a cold front come through. Now it's 50 degrees, so <laughs> had too many difficulties and two days ago when it was 80, 75, somewhere in there, uh, we had 30 mile an hour wind so I couldn't fly then. But anyways, today we're going to go over the new DJI ground station. And I'd spent a lot of time with it yesterday, had too many te technical difficulties to do anything about it uh, or, or to use anything for this video. But after using it, I'm thinking it's pretty much beta in my opinion. I'm going to let you guys decide, but here are some of the things, little spoiler alert for you, some of the things that I found that are wrong with it. And unfortunately, I wish there were some pros to it, but I, I, I don't see where it's useful. useful. Especially with the word pro in it, I think we're far, far from it. I don't even know if you're just starting off how this would help you at all, but correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, I haven't used it long enough or something. Maybe I'm missing something. But anyways, I'm going to let you guys decide. Let's go ahead and get to it. So I've gone ahead and launched the Ground Station app. And as you can see on the left-hand side here is going to be all our missions once we start creating them. You can see it, but let's go across the top. I think most of you realize the the uh, the mode position, the satellites, the radio, the camera, and the power. That's all pretty standard stuff. The menu up here, the three dots, just gives you an opportunity to calibrate the compass, what stick mode you're going to be in, etc. Most of you guys already know what all that is. So that's all your options in here. You got your map modes up here. You can either put satellite or road map which I'm sure you guys already know that this button here just takes you to to the home base which leads me <laughs> to tell you that this does not show where the bird is I'm not anywhere near this location I don't even know why it's showing you there I am where you can see the bird down here the Inspire, this is where I am. This other location, I have no idea what that's doing. When I was playing with this yesterday, it was all over the board. So is it interference? Is it some weird stuff? No, it's the app because look at this screenshot from just a couple of seconds ago from the Go app. Perfect. Everything's lined up. So coming back here to the Ground Station app, you can see it, it's all screwed up. So there's one thing that's funky that doesn't work either. So let's go ahead. We're going to start by creating a new mission. I'm going to tap this blue button in the lower right hand corner that says new mission. And then we have three different types of missions that we can fly here. A virtual fence, a 3D map, and a waypoint. So let's start with the easy stuff and I'm going to click waypoint. There's two different types of waypoints or two different ways that you can lay the waypoint out. Once you can, one way is to fly the aircraft around, which I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. That defeats the whole purpose of even having ground station, but perhaps uh, there is a reason why you'd want to do that. And if that's the case, please enlighten me. Uh, and then there's tap, where you just tap on the map and tell it where you want to go. So I'm going to tap on tap, and we're just going to align the map up. And I'm just going to tap right here next to where the bird already is and I'm just going to lay out a small area I don't want to go too far come back about this home so you'll see that each point that I lay down has a plus sign in between it and the next point and that's of course so you can add points I'm going to minimize that screen there and so if I click and drag you can see I can add a point there I can add a point there and if I want to subtract them you can see that the active point is blue that's the one it's going to delete. So if you look over here on the panel at the bottom left of the panel, you see a little trash can. I just tap that to delete a point. It's going to highlight for you the next point. So you tap on the point that you want to delete. I want to tap on this one that's on the bottom here. So I tap on that. It turns blue. I hit press the trash can and it is deleted. So now let's go over all our settings for the map itself. If you look at the top, that's just giving you so far the way you had your, how many points you have laid out at your current speed, how long it's going to take, uh, the flight length, etc., etc. So let's go through these. First of all, I'm going to stay in all points, which means that all the settings 
I make here are going to be for all the points. So the speed's going to be the same, the altitude's going to be the same, etc. If I want to, if I tap on each point, we can, the one that's highlighted is the settings that this is going to go to. So you can actually go to different altitudes, go to different speeds between uh, each one. Or actually, I don't think you can do speeds. I don't see speeds on here. So I haven't tried this yet. Uh, mainly because, well, you'll find out here in a minute. It, to me, it just it's not conducive to filming. So I'm going to say, oh, we'll keep it around there. Uh, 164 feet. No, let's bring that down. Here's another little gripe I have is these sliders are way too sensitive. I'm just rolling my finger here. Let's say I'm trying to get to 50 feet. All right, well, I can get to somewhere there. I'm rolling my finger back and forth, and it's near impossible. Even when I let go, it goes from whatever number I was on to some other number. So that doesn't work. You can tap and hold on the numbered area and get this plus minus, but they're just tiny, tiny little increments. And that plus minus should be under the number because when you go to use your fingers to tap on that, you can't see the number. So I don't know. It really needs to be, you need really, really need to be able to tap on it and a field pop up and you enter in the numbers. That's the way it should be. Speed, eh, it's okay for a slider, I suppose. Uh, let's jump down here to aircraft heading. And do you want it course aligned? And that is to say, when it goes to a waypoint, the drone is going to spin and turn and point to the next waypoint, and that's, that's the way it's going to go. Or do you want to do it defined per point? Now, I tapped on defined per point, and you'd think when it came back to this screen that it would force you to go into each point, which it doesn't, so I don't, that doesn't seem right. So I don't know how it would react, and I'm not going to fly it to find out. So I'm going to go back here, click on course align, and come back here to all points. And then, of course, the last thing we need to set is our end mission action. So if I tap on that, by default, it is set on hover. I can click on it to, I can select return to home or for it to land. I would suggest hover <laughs> or, or return to home. I don't know about land. You got to be really careful about where that last point is if you're going to tell it to land. So let's jump in here. And then now all we have to do is hit our start mission button, which is this little blue and white button up here in the right hand corner with the airplane on it. And you can see we have a couple of errors here. And the main one is, is that our mode switch needs to be in F. So I'm going to switch that to F. That's going to make that turn green. And then down here, waypoints fail. Well, they won't load if I'm in GPS mode. So now that I'm in F mode, all I have to do is tap on retry. And that will upload the point. And now that it's done that, I can tap on start to fly. And I have my gear set to manually, so I have to manually raise the gear. If yours is set to auto, it will automatically come up, of course. So there it goes. It's taken off. It's going to the first point, and it's going to pause. You see that jerk? Don't like that. And then it stops at each, at each turn, which is not good. <laughs> if you're videoing, that's not going to do you a darn bit of good. So I'm not so sure why it even does that. And then it stops, turns. Now while it's flying, if you'll also notice, there is no way to control the camera. Now I can spin right and left to point the camera in different directions, but that's about it. And I can point it up and down, but I cannot change and I can't yaw the camera right and left. I can't do any of that. So I don't, I don't really get what, how you would use this. It's just not, the fact that it stops and jerks like that just, just really doesn't work for me. I don't know where, oh, it's going home, <laughs> which is a joke. It's the wrong direction. So 
there's a couple of problems right there that I'm having. Maybe some of you haven't. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it did this to me yesterday too. So I'm going to come back and land here. I'm back in GPS mode. I'm not letting it. So that's GPS mode. All right, so in this section, we're gonna go over the fence. So we've just reached the end of the waypoint section, and you can see it defaults back to this. I went ahead and I didn't save the mission or anything. I don't need to. Um, so we'll do the fence. So again, down here in the bottom right-hand corner, I'm gonna hit new mission, and we're gonna click on virtual fence. And then again, I'm going to tap on the, so that I can tap on the map to set the fence and not fly the aircraft. So in this one, this one's a little different. We're not going to put waypoints. We just tap on the screen and it puts a square down. And then we just drag this square. Let's not go too close to this tree. Oh, something like that. I'm going to keep it small. I don't want to get it too far from the camera so you guys can still see it. So with this one, it's very simple. We set a speed with the maximum, we want the maximum speed to be and the maximum altitude inside the box. And that's really all there is to it. When I tap on this blue button up here, it doesn't start the fly, it just sets the fence and then you have to take off. And as you can see, I'm outside the fence. And by the way, you notice that everything finally lined up in the app. This is the first time I have seen it in the right location in this app. So I don't know, still a little spotty. It should have never done it. I've never seen it do that in the Go app. So there seems to be still something wrong with this app. Okay, so we got virtual fence. We got everything set. So I'm just going to tap up here. We are, of course, I had to go to GPS mode in that last section of the video. So I'm going to go down here to F mode. So now it's good to go. I'm going to hit start to fly. All right, so now I can start it up. And if you can hear that, that's the alarm. It's just telling you to go towards the fence. So I'm going to go ahead and take off, raise the gear and start flying towards the fence, the invisible fence, of course. And you'll notice it doesn't know whether it's coming from the outside in or from the outside out. It puts the brake on even when I'm entering the fence. So keep your eye on, I'm gonna stay here close so you guys can see this. As I come to the edge of the fence, You can see it pulling back. Now I got the stick full forward right now. And it's holding right there on the line. It's not gonna let me come past the line. Now I had the altitude set for, gosh, I can't remember. Was it a hundred and something feet? And we'll go up and it's probably out of the picture now. So, but it works. I'm just gonna tell you that the altitude thing works. Now what I did notice yesterday and it's not very windy today yesterday we had about 15 miles an hour but I want you to notice well you it's, it's hard to tell you just really have to tell how jerky it is I'm not doing anything to the sticks like that but yet this thing is just really here's going see I just barely tilted it back and it's just jerking. Here's left and left and right seems up. Oh, no, I mean it's just real, real. And I'm out in the middle of the fence, and it's just super, super jerky. So that's really all there is to the fence. I'm going to put it back in GPS mode, which should probably throw an error, and it did. I'm just going to say OK. Put the gear down and bring it back. So I, you know, I'm not sure what you'd use the fence for. I think the Go app has. Let's go ahead and land this so you can hear me. Because I know that's what you want to do is listen to me. <laughs> uh, okay. But I don't, the, the Go app already has where you could put a cap on the distance and the height, which to me, it's in a circle granted, 
and yeah, I guess you could still crash into trees and stuff, but the fence, you're not, to me, if you're teaching someone how to fly using that, it's kind of jerky. It's, it's really not a good experience for someone who's new. And if you're an experienced user and you're using it to like shoot a property or something, and maybe you're drawing the line on the edges of the property line. So you don't go, I mean, I don't know. That's, that's the only application I could think. I'd like to hear what, how you guys might use it. Um, but you can't fly it right. You're limiting your speed. You're limiting your altitude, which is okay, I guess. You could put it all the way up to 400 feet. So I, I don't know. You know, the app several versions ago used to have a tool in it where you could draw actually on the map. You could draw on the screen. You'd take your finger and draw a screen, and it would stay there. And visually, that gave you the boundaries. I fly a lot of ranches, so I would, you know, if I'm on a 200-acre ranch, I need to know where the boundary is because you know, you get up in the air, just it's just trees and trees and trees. You can't really hardly tell. So I would use that every single time, and it was a huge great. And then they, they, they took it out. I mean, a simple little tool like that that was hugely beneficial, at least to me. Maybe I was the exception and not the rule, obviously. But uh, that, to me, was a much simpler tool and worked far better than this. So anyways, next we're going to cover the 3D mapping. Now yesterday I couldn't get the GPS coordinates to load. It worked at first and then when I was recording for this video, it didn't work. So I'm going to try again today and if it fails today, well, it fails. Alright, here we are back at the home screen of Ground Station. And now we are going to run a uh, 3D mapping mission. So I'm going to tap New Mission in the lower right hand corner. And of course I'm going to tap on 3D Map Area. And I'm going to use the tap feature to place where I want my map area to be. So I just tap somewhere on the screen. That's going to put this square out there, much like the fence. And we'll just draw this out. I don't want to make it too big. And our altitude down here is 164 feet. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. Speed, 11 miles an hour. Uh, the camera model, it detects by itself. The shooting angle, parallel to main path, that's fine. I'm not, I don't spend a lot of time 3D mapping. Don't have a lot of experience with it, so I don't really know what the difference is. But I do know that the capture mode, hover and capture at point, will actually move the craft forward, stop, take a picture, move, stop, take a picture, move, stop. I'd rather do, at least for this, you guys that do 3D mapping, maybe there's advantages to each of these modes. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and tap capture at equal distant intervals. So there we go. And flight course is inside mode. Not terribly familiar with what scan and what inside mode is, or what it's used for. Um, and then I guess we are good to go. I'm going to go up here and hide, tap this little arrow to hide the panel. And then I'm going to tap my mission button, the little airplane in the top right. And of course, I'm in GPS mode, so I'm going to flip it to F mode. And I'm going to hit retry on the waypoints. And now we're good to fly. So I just tap fly, there she goes, and I'm using the Go app and the tracking, so hopefully this will track. I'm shooting at 4K so I can zoom in, I don't know how well this is going to work for you guys, so bear with me. So it's going up to 140 feet and then it's going to go to mission. The Go app, or the Osmo Mobile, is actually doing a pretty good job. <laughs> now again, there's no camera control here. You only get to see the little screen in the bottom right-hand corner, which I'm going to tap twice to make it bigger. You only get to see it flicker when it takes a picture. I don't even hear a sound. My iPad is turned up. It's going backwards. I don't know why it does that, but... Let me hide this. Let me make that smaller so you guys can see what it's doing on the screen. So it's a real simple mission. It's basically just scanning real quick. 
And then when it's done, I had it set to hover. So I don't, I didn't catch that. Did that say mission failed? I don't know. I'll have to go back and look at the video. I, I missed that. So I'm going to go back to GPS mode, which is going to, well, which I thought was going to give us an error. So now I'm going to come down and bring it back. I'm really quite impressed with the, uh, the Osmo tracking this thing. And there we have it. So we are done with that mission. So I can tap on mission 14. I see the flag next to it. I'm assuming that means we finished successfully. If that's something that you want to keep, we can go ahead and hit edit down here. And then when that brings up the editing of our 3D mapping, we can hit this save icon just like we did on, on the other modes as well. And that's it. Now, from there, I'm not going to go ahead and do a assemble the images and all that. I just want to really wanted to show you how all these sections of the map worked. So that concludes 3D mapping. Well, that covers all three modes, and I think you guys will come to the same conclusion I do. And if for those of you who've had some experience with it, if you've had different, man, I would I'd like to hear it. Maybe I missed something. I don't know. I, I've, I've looked around, but I, I, I don't see anything. Hopefully it would be obvious. or Maybe I'm just a dumb dumb and didn't see it. But I, I would call this pretty much beta. I certainly wouldn't put the word pro in it because there's third party apps out there that are far, far superior. Yes, they cost money. And you might say, well, what do you expect for free? But if, if it's useless, if you can't really use it for anything, free is not good either. So they've kind of wasted some effort. But Hopefully some feedback and they'll get back to it, but um, we will see. Like to hear your feedback. Let me know if this helps you in any way. Give me a thumbs up. If not, you can hit the other button. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.